Good afternoon. I think we should pick a section and then just read straight through it. So to flip it around all the time. So, um, I have to just figure out which section. How about this thing? Oh, I have a napkin in here. I had this pastor once who talked about, he called it napkin theology. And so on the napkin, um, he writes, what does this say? I can't even retell it because I, 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 I wasn't a big fan of the napkin theology, but he talks about the kingdom, the earth, the broken world, um, the cross, there's an animal over there, the cross, um, the forgiveness of sin, um, not having idols, having a savior, something about a ring, being ambassadors, and then ultimately um, the free gift. It's your choice. Do you want to open that gift? Do you want to choose to trust? Do you want to receive the gift? Um, do you want to surrender? Um, you open the gift with your faith. I don't know. It's not my thing. I can see how some people would. Um, I don't know. You can probably Google napkin theology and learn about it. I don't think, see, I'm not the kind of person who thinks like, oh, let's use our words to tell people about Jesus and then they'll just miraculously want to all of a sudden become Christian. Like that's not how it has, I just, maybe it works that way for some people, but I, um, I do believe that it is something that God does and um, people can assist in that process. Like God can, you have to be, if you're open, like God can use you in that process to help somebody else. Um, like if you're the one who's gonna maybe invite them to church or, or whatever, have a conversation, like God can use you, but it's not like your action is making that person all of a sudden decide they wanna be a Christian, you know? That's between them and God. So I, I'm a fan of the God pursues you or God pursues us line of thought, not the we individuals have to somehow humanly go out and convert other people, right? That's where you get like the crusades and stuff. It's just not always healthy to be thinking that fleshly. Although I think other people would strongly disagree. So probably not a topic we should discuss. <laughs> What should we read? This is really highlighted. Oh, Philippians. Eh, I'm bored of that. Um, Colossians. Colossians. I don't really, let's read Colossians. Because it's highlighted and I don't know off the top of my head what it's about. Um, Colossians. Jesus Christ is all you need. Don't be distracted by lesser things. Christ is supreme. The creator, the reconciler. Paul. We recently talked about Paul. I think that's the same Paul. Had heard of the Colossians' faith and love, but he wanted to be sure that they did not lose sight of Christ and focus on mere rules and religious traditions. If they focused on Christ, Jesus could lead them on to maturity. I like this section. I think I'm going to like this one. The young church at Colossae had become a target of heretical attacks. Some religious teachers insisted they had additional knowledge that was necessary for salvation. Paul's letter refutes the false teachers by asserting the supremacy of Christ. Yeah. So written by the Apostle Paul, which I believe formerly known as Saul, unless there's multiple Pauls, which there might be. I think there's a different Paul, but the, I don't think this is the different Paul. 
Um, the church in Colossae, modern day Turkey, and all followers of Jesus is who the audience is, written about 60 AD, setting. Paul writes from house arrest in Rome to dispel false teaching in Colossae. Verse to remember, whatever you do, whether in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So this is the whole Jesus alone stuff. Christ is enough for both salvation and sanctification and maturity, right? We have salvation by grace, not by works, not by the Old Testament stuff. Um, so I like this. I finally like, like this. But let's only read a sliver of it because I'm on a time schedule. <laughs> Colossians 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, writes to God's holy people in Colossae, the faithful brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father. This section is called Thanksgiving and Prayer. We always thank God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ when we pray for you because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all God's people, the faith and love that spring from the hope stored up for you in heaven and about which you have already heard in the true message of the gospel that has come to you. In the same way, the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and truly understood god's grace you learned it from a pap our dear fellow servant who is a faithful minister of christ on our behalf and who also told us of your love in the spirit for this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live in a live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. So this light, dark stuff, when I first became a Christian, it, fe it did feel like that. Like I was moving through a tunnel of darkness and every now and then there would be people who were very bright lights like like um i felt like i was in a storm and like i was in a tunnel and like um under just under i don't it was just i don't want to say under attack I, I didn't think about it that way then but i just felt so like going through a hard thing like a hard black dark tunnel and then there would be some people who I would be like, they would just be such bright lights that if I could just focus on them, um, like it helped me. Um, but anyway, that's probably enough for today. So we'll keep reading. We didn't even finish Colossians 1, but we'll finish reading later. Bye.